60 months after voters passed a ballot measure banning bilingual education, districts across the state are grappling with how to implement the controversial measure. Also tonight, a special report on local relief efforts in the aftermath of the bombing of U.S. embassies in East Africa. Those stories tonight on This Week in Northern California. Good evening and welcome to This Week in Northern California. I'm Belva Davis. Joining me tonight for an analysis of some of this week's top stories in the Bay Area are four local reporters. They are Scott Schaefer, host for California Report. Tom Abate, high-tech reporter for the San Francisco Chronicle. William Carlson, reporter for the San Francisco Chronicle. And Lori Artani, education writer for the San Jose Mercury News. Well, what, well, months after voters passed Proposition 227, which bans bilingual education, districts across the state are grappling with implementing the controversial measure. Eight districts in the Bay Area are seeking waivers to get around the new law, but the State Board of Education must grant the waivers and is refusing to act. It contends it doesn't have the legal authority to override the voter-approved initiative. Lara Artani, what has happened uh, with why hasn't the board really been able to act? Well, once again, like many of these initiatives, we ended up in court. And the board is waiting. They don't feel they have the authority to override the will of the people, so they're waiting for an appellate court decision that will tell them whether they can act and whether they can grant these waivers. But even if a judge does rule that they, can't, they have the authority to grant the waivers, that's no guarantee that these school districts are going to get them. The education law is written such that it's, it's easy to get waivers, but here is a case where you have a board that has not yet said how they will come out on this, but is, is very attuned to what the people have said. So the districts seem to feel that they have what they have the proof that their programs work, but it'll be up to the board to determine if that proof is good enough. In the meantime, you've got districts in the rest, you've got other districts throughout the state that are implementing Proposition 227. The interesting thing is, though, they're doing it in many different ways. Um, in Gilroy, for example, in Franklin McKinley, which is a small district in San Jose, they're doing a 60% English and a 40% Spanish. Well, for some people, that is not, that's not their definition of overwhelmingly in English, but there is no, the board has given, the State Board of Education, has given districts a lot of leeway in determining what what overwhelmingly is. And so there is no real measure to determine whether or not a district's in violation or not. Lori, to what extent are election year politics playing in? You've got Delaney Easton, who heads up the schools in California. She opposed Prop 227, and now her office has to implement it and can also grant waivers. And she's running against Gloria Mata Tuckman, who co-authored 227, which en ended bilingual education. That's an, it's put Delane in, in, in a very interesting spot, and she has pledged that despite her opposition, she's going to enforce enforce the law as, as the voters have approved. Gloria Mata Tuckman has made that a big part of her campaign. She has said that that is one of the things that she's going to be mm -hmm. watching, and that's one of the platforms that she's running on. The voters have spoken, and I'm going to ensure that the provisions of Proposition 227 are implemented. And she isn't sure if, if, if Delane Easton can be trusted given her opposition. Are most districts implementing 227? Yes, most districts are implementing 227. And the board, the State Board of Education, has also put uh, some more strings on it in that in order to get certain federal dollars, districts need to certify that they're complying with Proposition 227. How have parents come down? Have parents asked for waivers uh, for their children to have bilingual programs, or are they going along with the immersion? Well, that'll, that's happening right now. As you recall, under the initiative, the first 30 days had to be in English, but if parents chose to have their child in a bilingual program, they could apply for a waiver. In districts all over the Bay Area, I think you're seeing, it, it depends largely on the district. Some districts, a lot of parents have stepped forward and said, we want our bilingual programs. There have been some interesting things happening, though, in that a lot of districts were holding informational meetings about the waiver process. And so Ron Enns has been a little suspicious about exactly what they were telling their parents about getting waivers. Mm. Is California a laboratory test in this? I mean, what's happening in the rest of the nation, in Texas and 
other states with high immigrant uh, populations. Uh, are they watching California, or do they have something like that? They are. Actually, one, one state is actually maybe emulating California, and that's Arizona. Uh -huh. Ron Enns has been down there. They're interested in craft, crafting a, a, an initiative similar to Proposition 227. An interesting th thing, though, is in Florida, Florida is going completely the opposite way. Um, several right. districts in that state have said that they value bilingual education and they want children to be able to speak two languages and so they're putting more money into bilingual education. Yeah, teaching Anglo kids, in other words, to speak mm -hmm. Spanish? Mm -hmm. And Texas tried to hire some of our bilingual teachers, I That's think, right. didn't they? That's right. They sure did. What are, what are teachers saying? How difficult is this for teachers? They still have the students that were going to come there anyway, whether we had this law or not, many of whom cannot speak English. So how are they responding to this challenge? Well, teachers, they've had a lot of, they've had a lot of uh, in-service training to help get them ready for this change. A lot of programs, uh, teachers used a little of English and a little of Spanish, so it's not that dramatic of a change for them. In some districts, though, where teachers have used nothing but Spanish, it's been a little bit of a shell shock for them. They're, they're just not used to teaching in English. Does anyone know how the kids have handled this or felt? I, I think the kids... I, I think the kids are kids. They somehow have managed to scrape by. I think those just those kids that are that are in need of help or have difficulty with the language are are they they're able to get the help that they need from the teachers. Is there some sort of measurement going on? I mean, how are we going to know how this is working? <laughs> that <laughs> is, there that a is a very good question. Just being heavily that is studied, a very good question. Come back in ten years, and we'll give you the yeah, answer to that question. Right. But is there a formal program for of assessment? Well, the STAR test is a way of assessing whether or not mm -hmm. students are learning mm -hmm. English, and then that'll continue, and we'll have standards in place. But that right now is the one measure that we but, have. But to is it also of whether they learn mathematics and history and so forth? And the, uh, is there a way to know whether long term the kids who are immersed into English will end up being better? history or math skills. Well, well it'll, it'll take a while, but we'll see. They'll have, districts will have, districts have ways of determining whether or not kids are learning, and we'll have that. Thank you very much, Laurie.